mind and boredom. Nothing is boring, nothing is repetitive or monotonous for a man of awareness. However, man finds certain things boring, repetitive and monotonous. Remember, nothing is boring. Instead, you are and you bring your quality to everything that you do. No act is boring in itself and no act can be not boring either. The act is simply neutral. It is you who make it boring or non-boring. And the same act can be boredom to you this moment and the next moment it may become a blissful thing that you can enjoy. It all depends on you and your innerness. When you are aware and there is bliss overflowing, then nothing is boring, monotonous or repetitive. Not that the act has changed and there is boredom, indeed your mood, the quality that you bring to the act has changed. Your mood and state of awakening gives you a certain quality. So remember you are not bored because repetitive acts have to be done. Rather, on the contrary, you are bored. That is why they appear repetitive and monotonous. For instance, children want to repeat things. They go on playing the same game again and again. You get bored. What are they doing? The same game again and again. They go on asking for the same story every night. They enjoy it again and again. And they say, tell me the same story again. What is the matter? You cannot conceive it. It looks stupid. It is not. They are so alive that nothing is repetitive or monotonous for them. You are dead and everything is repetitive for you. They go on repeating the same game the whole day. They can go on and if you stop them, they will scream and cry and they will resist you saying don't destroy our game. And you cannot understand what they are doing the whole day, playing the same game over and over again. Indeed, little children have a different quality of consciousness that you do not have or precisely as you continue along life's journey, you have lost it somewhere. Nothing is repetitive for children. They enjoy it so much that the very enjoyment changes the quality and then they enjoy it again. They go on enjoying more and more. Indeed, as time goes on, they enjoy it even more because now they know the know-how, the technique, the way. The third time they enjoy it even more because now they are acquainted with everything. They go on enjoying and their enjoyment goes on increasing. Your enjoyment goes on decreasing. What is the matter? Is the act itself boring? Oh, is something wrong with your mode of being, your state of consciousness? Look at it from another angle. Two lovers will go on repeating the same acts every day. They will kiss and they will hug. These are the same acts and they would like to go on doing that ad infinitum. If you give them time, they will go on repeating to the very end of existence. What are they doing? Lovers have again become children. That is why love is so innocent. It makes you a child again. Now they are enjoying the game to the very core. They are again children. The whole nonsense of maturity they have thrown. They are playing with each other's body and to them nothing is repetitive or monotonous. Each kiss is something absolutely new and unique as if never before. It was never so before. It will never be the same again. Each moment of love has its own individual existence, non-repetitive and non-monotonous. That is why they go on enjoying. The law of diminishing returns of economics does not apply to them. For love, there is no law of diminishing returns. Instead, 
there is law of increasing returns. That is why economists cannot understand love, mathematicians cannot understand love, and all those who are efficient in calculation cannot understand love at all, because this is absurd. It defies all laws, all mathematics, it goes on increasing. Two lovers appear to us as if they are repeating. To them they are not repeating at all. But to a prostitute the law of economics will apply. Because for her love is not love. To her love is a commodity, something to be sold, something which can be purchased. So if you go and kiss a prostitute, for her it is boredom, repetition, and someday she will say, this is sheer nonsense. I am bored of being kissed and kissing the whole day. It is intolerable. She will say that it is a repetitive act. That is what I want to show you the distinction. For a lover it is not repetitive. For a prostitute it is. So really the act itself is not repetitive. It is your quality that you bring to it that makes really the difference. Whatever you do, if you love it, it will never be repetitive. If you love your doings, your acts, there will be no boredom. But you do not love. I go on talking to you week after week, month after month, and year after years. Almost 30 years I have been talking to you. I can go on at infinitum. I love it. It is not repetitive for me. From eternity to eternity I can go on talking with you. Indeed my talks are to communicate with your heart. Through these talks I connect you to your unconscious and through the light that I am, the awareness that I am, so that there is light in the dark caves of your unconsciousness and all that is unconscious begins to grow and you continue to rise higher rungs of consciousness. Indeed my talks are to communicate with your heart and it is love to me. It is not a repetitive act. Had it been so, I would get bored. If your act becomes creative, you will not be bored at all. And your act becomes creation only when you love it. But the basic difficulty is that you cannot love whatsoever you do because you hate yourself. And that is the basic problem. So whatever you do, you hate it because basically you hate yourself. You have not yet accepted yourself as you are. You have not yet thanked existence for your existence. You want yourself to be something that you are not. You have not accepted yourself, so how can you accept your acts? Love yourself, accept yourself as you are first. This is the primary and most essential requirement because action is secondary. Remember each action flows from your being. If I love myself, then whatsoever I do, I love as well. And if I do not love, I will stop it. What is the need to continue something that I do not love? It may sound eccentric, but this is how it is. But you do not love and the source is unloved. So the product of that source cannot be loved. Whatsoever you do, you may be an engineer or you may be a doctor or a chemist or a scientist. Whatsoever you do, you bring hate to it. Your hate makes it repetitive. You hate it and you go on finding excuses for why you are doing it. You say, I am doing it for my wife, for my children and so on and so forth. And your father was doing it for you and his father was doing for him and your children will do it for their children and no one will enjoy life. The life continues like this. These are tricks. You are simply a coward. You cannot escape from it because it gives you security, safety, income and bank balance. 
because you are a coward you cannot stop doing it and you cannot start doing that which you love then you go on putting everything on your children on your wife and they are doing the same thing no one is really existing for himself no one loves himself enough to exist for himself then everything goes wrong the source is poison and all that comes out of that source is poisoned as well therefore never think that if you change your job you will love it or if you change your husband or wife you will be happy no that does not happen indeed you will bring the quality of your being to the new job in the beginning it may be a sensation something new but sooner or later you will settle down and it will be the same story change yourself love yourself and love whatsoever you do howsoever is small it makes no difference look at life life enjoys repetition look at nature the seasons move in a circle the sun moves in a circle every day every morning it rises and the summer comes and the winter follows and the rain comes and they go on moving in synergistic harmony a harmony that nobody is doing but it is happening on its own in a deep way the whole existence is repetitively moving it seems creation is just like a child's play the trees are not bored the sky is not bored the sky never sees now again the clouds for so many millennia the sky has been seeing the clouds floating every rainy season the clouds come and they start moving look at life everything is repetitive the word repetitive is not good rather it will be better to say it goes on playing the same game again and again it enjoys it so much that it wants to repeat it again and it goes on increasing in existence everything goes on moving towards a climax why does man get bored with repetition not because repetition is boring but because you are so bored that everything will be boring everything that you do will be boring so really it is not a question that this act makes you bored or that act makes you bored or repetition or monotony or tedious job makes you bored the real thing is that you are bored whether you do something or not if you are simply relaxing in a chair you will be bored not doing anything you will be bored you say there is nothing to do and i am bored nothing to do and i am bored the whole week you are bored because of the tedious work that you do in the office and their schedules and on the weekend you are bored because there is nothing to do the whole life you are bored because of doing a repetitive job in a factory in an office or in a shop or somewhere else then when you retire you are bored again because now there is nothing to do it is not a question of anything else something is not creating boredom in you instead you are bored and you go on bringing your boredom to everything that you touch and do your very touch makes everything boredom you have an alchemic touch you can change everything into boredom everything i say therefore never think of changing jobs actions or husbands or wives instead think of changing the quality of your consciousness be more loving to yourself the first thing to remember is to be more and more loving to yourself the moralists have poisoned the whole world they say do not love yourself that is selfishness they say love others but not yourself the love of the self is sin and i say to you that this is absolute nonsense and not only nonsense indeed it is dangerous one unless you love yourself you cannot love anybody it is impossible because a man who is not in love with himself cannot be in love with anybody else if you are in love with yourself only then 
can your overflowing love reach somebody? A man who has not loved himself will hate himself. And if you hate yourself, how can you love anybody? You will hate others as well. You can only pretend. And when you cannot love yourself, how do you expect others to love? Everyone is condemned in his own eyes. The whole moralistic teaching gives you only one thing, techniques of self-condemnation. How to condemn yourself, how you are bad, guilty or a sinner. If you cannot love yourself, you cannot love anybody. The love must happen at home first and you are the home. And only when it overflows, it can reach to others. And when it overflows, it overflows into your actions, into whatsoever you do, whether you paint or make a shoe or anything, just cleaning the street, whatsoever you do, cleaning the floor, cooking, writing something. If you are in deep love with yourself, it flows into everything you do. It flows even when you are not doing anything. It goes on flowing. It becomes your very existence and then nothing is boring or monotonous. People come to me sometimes very sympathetically. They ask me whole day, you are sitting in one room after you have finished your work, not even looking out of the window or going out of the door or watching television, don't you get bored? I am with myself, why should I get bored? They say just sitting alone and you don't get bored. If I hate myself, I will certainly get bored. Because you cannot live with a person you hate, you get bored with yourself. You cannot be alone. Even if you are alone for a few moments, you get fidgety, you get uncomfortable and an uneasiness comes into your being. You long to meet someone because you cannot remain with yourself. The company is so boring. I mean your own company. You cannot look at your own face. You cannot touch your hand lovingly. No, that is impossible. They ask me and their asking is relevant to their own reference because they will get bored if they are alone. They ask me, don't you go out sometimes? But there is no need for me to go out once I have finished all that I have to do for my living that day. I have to do my living, for that I have to go out and after that I am finished with everything. I am in my own company that I cherish the most. Sometimes they ask me, people come to you with the same problem again and again. Don't you get bored? Again and again the same stupid questions. Because everyone has the same problem. You are so unoriginal. You cannot even create an original problem. Everyone has the same problem. Some are related to your love, to your sex, with your peace of mind, with your confusions or something else. Some psychology, some pathology, something else. So people ask me, don't you get bored? I never get bored because each individual is unique to me. And because of the individual, the problem he brings is not repetition because the context is different. The individual is different. You come to me with your love problem, another comes with his love problem. Both look similar on the surface, but they are not. Because two individuals are so different, and this difference changes the quality of the problem. Each individual is so unique that he cannot be put with anybody else. No category can be made. But then you have to have a very keen awareness to penetrate to the very core where the individual is unique. Otherwise on the surface everyone looks alike. Every problem looks alike. Just on the surface Everyone is alike with the same problems, but if you penetrate deep within, if you are alert and ready to move with the person to the deeper core of his being, the deeper you go, the more original, individual and unique a phenomena comes into existence, comes into being. If you can see to the very center, this person before you 
is unrepeatable. He has never been before. He will never be again. He is just unique. And the mystery then overfills you. The mystery of the unique person. Nothing is repetition if you know how to penetrate, how to be loving and alert. Otherwise, everything is repetitive. You are bored because you have a consciousness that creates boredom. Change the consciousness and there will be no more boredom. You will go on changing the objects and that will not make any difference. The wife said, if I do not do anything, it will be tremendously difficult for me to tolerate because I have heard that joke a thousand and one times. You come sometimes, I am always here. Whenever somebody comes, he tells the same joke. If I did not do something with my hands, I would become so fidgety that it would be almost impossible to be impolite. So I have to do something so that I can move my restlessness into wood and I can hide behind the wood. Whenever you feel bored, you will feel restless as well. Restlessness is an indication of the body. The body is saying, move away from here, go somewhere, but don't remain here. But the mind goes on smiling and the eyes goes on sparkling and you go on saying that you are listening and you have never heard such a beautiful thing. The mind is civilized, the body is still wild, the mind is human while the body is still animal. The mind is false, the body is true. Mind knows the rules and regulations, how to behave and how to behave rightly. So even if you meet a boat, you say, I am so happy, so glad to see you. And deep down, if you were allowed, you would kill this man. He tempts you to murder. Then you become fidgety, then you feel restlessness. If you listen to the body and run away, the restlessness will disappear. Try it. Try it. If somebody is boring, simply start jumping and running around. See, restlessness will disappear because restlessness simply shows that the energy does not want to be here. The energy is already on the move. The energy has already left the place. Now you follow the energy and move away from there. So the real thing is to understand boredom, not restlessness. Boredom is a very, very significant phenomenon. Only man feels bored, no other animal. You cannot make a cow bored, that is impossible. Only man gets bored because only man is conscious. Consciousness is the cause. The more sensitive you are, the more alert you are, the more conscious you are, and the more you will feel bored. You will feel bored in more situations. A mediocre mind does not feel so bored. He goes on, he accepts whatsoever is, is okay. He is not so alert. The more alert you become, the more fresh, the more you will feel it if some situation is just a repetition. If some situation is just getting hard on you, if some situation is just stale, the more sensitive you are, the more bold you will become. Boredom is an indication of sensitivity. Trees are not bold, animals are not bold, and the rocks too are not bold because they are not sensitive enough. This has to be one of the basic understandings about your boredom that you are sensitive. But Buddhas are also not bored. You cannot bore a Buddha. Animals are not bored and Buddhas are not bored. So boredom exists as a middle phenomenon between animal and the Buddha. For boredom, a little more sensitivity is needed than is given to the animals. And if you want to get beyond it, then you have to become totally sensitive. Then again the boredom disappears. But in the middle the boredom is there and it remains. Either you become animal-like, then boredom disappears, or you become Buddha-like, then too boredom will disappear. And there is no other way. This is the only way.